taking another stretch in the 5D's era in the naming shenanigans of whether you should call this an archetype or not, we have uh, the Unicorn archetype used by Team Unicorn in 5D's a grand total of one duel and were never featured or remembered again until they were printed uh, as ultra and ultimate rare in their respective packs making them one of the, the most expensive t cards of their time so yeah but as an archetype they don't tick that uh, often in the meta or well any sort of way so yeah let's g take a look at their monsters and all of their cards basically starting of course with the first monster that being unihorn familiar a level 2 beast tuner with uh, 1000 defense and zero attack and when this face up defense position card you control is se uh, selected as an attack target you can remove from play one monster you control and uh, other than this card to remove this card from play the attacking monster must attack. During your next standby phase, if this card was removed from play by this effect, this card returns to the field. I am not sure why they made this thing into a tuner version of Tech, Ge Tech Genius Bl Blade Blaster, but I, it can protect itself along with one monster by making the attack a direct attack, or, you know, by forcing them to attack a monster that is currently uh, remains on the field if you have like three of them uh, which most probably is gonna be like a huge ass beat stick so yeah it's a bit of a it's a bit on the gimmicky side but it's their only archetypal tuner so yeah uh, beggars can be choosers so you yeah, yeah basically you run this guy at three because it's their only tuner they have be only beast tuner that is because two of their lower mo level synchro monster mo require a beast tuner while the their best monster well their highest boss monster requires any tuner so yeah, yeah you d you usually run this uh, for for its stats and level not for its effect moving on next up we have another level 2 that being unibird you can remove this face. Uh, uh, you can remove from play this face-up card and one face-up monster you control. Do select one synchro monster in your graveyard with le with a level less than or equal to the combined original levels of the other two monsters. Special summon that synchro monster. So basically, this is an archetypal version of I don't know uh, refusion for synchro monsters, or if you really wanna. Uh, to be more precise here, a uh, different version of Vayu, the Emblem of Honor from Black Wings. So yeah, it's actually arguably better than Unihorn because uh, the other monster does not need to be a tuner monster in order to, um, you know, in order to trigger this effect. And the best thing of all is that it can revive any synchro monster. So. For example, if you manage this along with a, I don't know, level 10 monster, you can ban you can basically revive any synchro monster you pl uh, you just so desire with this uh, with a level 2 monster with 100 attack and 600 defense, which is pretty damn admirable. So yeah, I I don't know if you should basically run level 10s in this deck. You probably shouldn't. I just Said, uh, said that as an example, but Unibird is actually a pretty nifty card and it hurt, doesn't hurt at 2 or 3. Next up we have their level 3, Monoceros. It's a level 3 beast with uh, 1000 attack and defense. And this card cannot be normal summoned or set, and this card can only be special summoned by removing from play one spell card from your hand. When you synchro summon using this card uh, uh, and a beast type tuner monster as synchro material monsters, you can target one beast type tuner monster used for the synchro summon the, uh, and special summon it from the graveyard. Basically, if you use this and the Unihorn familiar to summon their level 5 synchro, you revive Unihorn and then use the use uh, that uh, Unihorn familiar along with the level 5 synchro we'll mention soon to go into the level 7 synchro, which we'll get into soon. Simple and easy, yeah. Uh, that That's basically how this deck functions continuously reviving tuners in order to uh, further their plays with synchro monsters or at least it used to before link monsters became a thing still the special summonable 
level 3 is okay, I, I, although I wish the summoning condition was a bit better. Banishing a spell card from your hand is a bit too costly in my uh, perception. If it vanished from the graveyard, now that would be uh, a bit more splashable, but still not nearly as impressive. Yeah, just a bit more playable, as it were. Monoceros is, but still, Monoceros uh, provides a decent target for as a non-tuner, so it should be ran at at least two copies. Next up, we have their first level four, that being DD Unicorn Knight. This card cannot be normal summoned or set. This card can only be special summoned if your opponent contro controls a monster as you control a face-up tuner monster. When this card is special summoned this way, you can uh, select one of, one of your remove from play level 3 or lower on tuner monsters and special summon it. Its effects are negated and you cannot normal summon or set during the uh, turn you uh, special summon this card. Well, talk about restriction overload here. Yeah, the only relevant monster this thing can revive is Monoceros, maybe Unibird if you used its effect uh, previously. And not to mention that this thing can be a nasty first turn brick if you draw into it, because, well, you need to special summon a tuner monster before you actually c can attempt to summon this, and not to mention that their tuner monster is level 2, meaning 2 plus 4 is equal 6, and they don't have a level 6 monster in their arsenal. Unless you're, like, playing Goyo Guardian. Well, Goyo Guardian now requires an Earth Tuner due to the the errata he received after getting unbanned, so, yeah. Unicorn Knight is a very questionable choice in this deck to consider running. However, uh, a monster you could consider running is this one. The level 4 as well, Bicorn Ream. It's a uh, level 4 with 800 attack and 600 defense. And when this card is sent to the graveyard as a synchro material monster for, for a synchro summon, send the top two cards from your opponent's deck to the graveyard. Now, it doesn't uh, seem like much at first. Uh, it seems like a mediocre light sworn at best. However, there is actually a synchro monster. A there are level 7 synchro monster which highly benefits from this. So, yeah, when you use this to summon that monster, you basically get uh, get an extra mi uh, mill of two cards. So, yeah, we'll get to that synchro monster later. So, yeah, you should run this at two or three. And the last main deck monster is, the, is yet another level four. That being Hypnocorn. When this card is normal summoned, if your opponent controls a monster, you control no, uh, no other monsters. You can target one set spell or trap on the field, destroy that target. Okay, any reason why a shittier version of Necros of Decisive Armor was made? I don't know, and I don't plan on thinking about it. And you shouldn't ever run this thing because it's too damn specific for its own good. Alright, moving on to their Synchro Monsters. First up we have the level 5 Thunder Unicorn. It's a level 5 with 2200 attack and 1800 defense, requires a beast type tuner and, and any, more, any or more non-tuner monsters. Uh, once per turn during your main phase, you can uh, select one face-up monster your opponent controls. It loses 500 attack for each monster you control until the end phase. During the turn this effect is activated, no other monsters can attack except this card. I mean, it was... Uh, Okay, level 5 back in the day in beast-centric builds, meaning it can, uh, with decent swarming, it can severely injure an opponent's monster by making him cough up tons of attack points, but nowadays you won't have as nearly as much as, a, as an established board for this thing to go off, because you first off you need a link monster for in order to summon this thing, so yeah, the best you'll swing is 1000, so yeah, if you uh, you control a link monster along with this thing. And maybe if you summon this using Monoceros and Unihorn, you'll have like three of them. So yeah, it's, it's a bit of an, it's a bit of an outdated type of uh, attack reduction effect, but still worth running at least one because it can be a decent target for their higher synchro monsters as material, so yeah, more power to you. Now their next monster is actually the best their archetype has to offer, 
that being Voltic Bicorn. It's a level 7 beast this time around. Requires, uh, has same summoning conditions as Thunder Unicorn. And has 2500 attack and 2000 defense. Stardust Dragon stats. And if this card is destroyed by an opponent's card, either by battle or card effect, both players send the top 7 cards of their deck to the graveyard. So, yeah, this a effect is actually pretty kick-ass. Why? Because the second effect helps out in deck milling to, uh, on the opponent to making them deck out. And the other effect which, well, the other part of the same effect where it makes you mill seven cards helps out a lot when, you know, playing light swarms and uh, setting up their graveyard and all that. So yeah, this uh, this card is actually seen in, uh, running in some y few light swarm builds because of this really cool effect, and people use their own card effects to pop this thing uh, uh, for additional usage. Although, wait, what am I saying? You can't uh, you can't actually mm, pop this with your own card effects because it has to be popped by your opponent. What am I saying? It would it would be actually pretty cool if you could actually pop this thing with your own card effect. So yeah, I was thinking for a second that this thing has the, has its anime effect where it can be popped by, uh, popped by your own card effects. Funny how your brain works sometimes. But anyway, this sti uh, this still is a fantastic card and you should always max out on it if you uh, play a unicorn build or throw in a copy of uh, two or if you're playing a light swarm build. Yeah, simple and easy. Their last monster is their level 8 boss monster, that being Lightning Tricorn. Uh, also a beast with 2800 attack and 2000 defense. Requires any tuner and one or more non-tuner beast type monsters. And if this card is destroyed by your opponent's card, either by battle or card effect, you can revive either a Thunder Unicorn or a Voltic Bicorn in your graveyard. Okay, so this is a, also a boss monster which basically resummons the uh, on two other boss monsters when they're when it's destroyed. So yeah, it's basically a recycling tool if anything else, and it's not be, uh, it's not worth running at more than one because uh, you most likely wanna well the the synchro monster you'll be summoning summoning this thing off of is Thunder Unicorn most of all, most often because you'll be waiting for Voltic Bicorn to be popped by an opponent's card effect. So yeah. Uh, so turboing this thing out you in, in the best way possible usually revolves around way, uh, turboing out the destruction of Voltic Bicorn so you can revive that and maybe mill some s seven more cards until the opponent's deck uh, decks out which is not very consistent nowadays in, uh, with the presence of heavy restrictions in form of link monsters. So, yeah, Th this card used to be kind of okay, now it's uh, actually fallen out of relevance. Their last card is Unicorn Beacon, a spell card. Uh, select one, banish a level 5 or lower beast type or winged beast monster in, uh, uh, in your... and remove from play one card in your uh, hand and special summon the selected monster in attack position. Um, it's okay, not... N n it's b basically generic beast and wing beast support but in terms of unicorn usage yeah you can fetch your banished monsters such as unibird or I don't know may maybe maybe thunder unicorn if you use unibird uh, on it to summon voltic bicorn so there's that but other than that I can't think of any relevant usages for this thing in unicorns and especially in generic ones because I literally can't think of any beast or be or wing beast warrior or wing beast or beast warrior deck that focuses on banishing stuff so yeah that's that and that was the unicorn archetype time for the grading scale their consistency is very flimsy and way too specific for any kind of regular play so I'm gonna be giving them on a 1 out of 3 Power is usually also a 1 out of 3 because nothing actually uh, exceeds 2800, so yeah, the Lightning Tricorn is their biggest beat stick, that is usually ran at 1. Voltic Bicorn is there is actually a pretty big beat stick, but it usually doesn't stick on the field for very too long. Yeah, you get the point, 1 out of 3 as well. 
Combat ability. Not many uh, combat cards are built for beast uh, beasts and winged beasts and beast warriors. So yeah, one out of three as well. It requires v way too generic uh, non-archetypal support, most of which is banned by now. So yeah, protection none to speak of. Literally, none of the support cards offer any kind of protection wh whatsoever. One out of three. However, I'm going to be generous in the versatility department and give him a 2 out of 3 because of Ultic Bicorn is a massive Kickstarter engine in Lightsworn, so yeah. So those were unicorns, a bit stretchy to call them actually an archetype, but I'm going to stretch it and do call them actually an archetype, so yes, that is going to conclude our video for today. And yeah, that was the last video I recorded, so before I go, went on my holiday, so yeah. I'll see you on Tuesday in exactly one week where I'll continue on with the brand new adventures of Archetype Analysis and I'll continue my journey through the 5Ds era. Thank you all so much for watching, stay tuned for more videos, work this and updates, comment, like and subscribe, and as usual, I'll upload the next vid whenever I can. See you all, have a good day, and peace.